any plans to record another System of a Down album right. in the near future? We don't really have any plans right now as far as recording another record. Uh, it's something that we might do one day, but we haven't really, you know, we've kind of mentioned it, hey, it would be nice to do that one day, but we've never really, we're not planning anything right now. But is there any reason why not? Or it's just like... Uh, my reasoning is I have too much work to do right now. Um, I have four different records that I finished last yeah. year and a film. And, uh, and we are doing tours with System as well. So between touring for with System, touring with my solo project for yeah. this, for... You know, I've got a symphony, my first symphony that I wrote called Orca, um, classical symphony. Uh, and uh, I've got a jazz record that I did with a few friends that's really amazing. And uh, also uh, an electronic British gangster soundtrack type of record that I did with my friend Jimmy Urin from Mindless Self-Indulgence. Um, so I'm doing a lot of different types of music. And, you know, when it's time, it'll be time. There's no reason yeah. for, you know, the reason is when it's, when it's there, it'll be there. Cool. And so, it's true that uh, after you release Harakiri, you're going to release another three albums. Yeah. That one that you told me. And what about the movie? <laughs> yeah. Um, the movie, too. Uh, well, it's we're trying to see whether we want to edit it for TV or whether we want to do a film thing with it. Okay. Uh, you'll probably see some clips. Because what I did was last year was like my busiest year ever. <laughs> you know, I did like uh, a, yeah, musical, a, a musical on the East Coast, worldwide touring with System, orchestral shows, um, things in Armenia. I went to yeah. Lebanon, a country I, uh, that I was born in that I had never been to my whole life. I made four records of completely different genres. Um, so I shot everything. <laughs> I had a camera on my head and I had like these spy glasses and, and a team following me everywhere. It was awesome. So now we have all this footage and we're trying to see do we want to make a film? Do we want it for TV? So we're deciding exactly how to cut it. And you'll see some clips with this film. We're going to take some of the footage that has to do with Harakiri and uh, put it out for our fans um, soon. And uh, so it'll it'll start coming out in different forms. So the name of the film, do you know already? Uh, right now we're calling it My Year. My it's, Year, okay, awesome. That was My Year. <laughs> awesome. Now, talking again about, about Harakiri, there is a song called Reality TV. Do you think yeah. that new generation is tired about reality TV? Hopefully. <laughs> You're younger than me, so you tell me what the new generation's tired of. I, I was tired of... Me, uh, reality Before since the started. first yeah <laughs> since the first reality yeah <laughs> the funny thing is the hypocritical part is they call it reality tv but it's not real it's yeah, all it's scripted it's, it's all true. like okay well we need something more dramatic so could you please fight with your husband yeah you know true. like what are you what are you angry about you know like it's it's not you know it's anyway the song reality tv is is a verbal assault a literary and smart verbal assault on the whole culture of reality tv yeah you know um uh, stupid people deserve stupid leaders. Stupid people deserve stupid entertainment. That's kind of where it's going. Yeah, of course. And hopefully the new generation are, like, enough about that. Yeah. I, I guess. I hope so. I and, hope so. And now, also you get involved in, in, in social causes, Axis of Justice, for example. Mm. What is the actual situation of Axis of Justice? It's still around. We just did a radio show, Tom and myself, Tom Morello and yeah. myself. Um, and we have a radio show that's on KPFK in Los Angeles and also in Sirius Satellite around the US um, and we're still you know once in a while we do interviews but mostly we just do a playlist of political yeah. songs and social leaning songs from different artists and we you know we talk about our experiences and stuff we've had the radio show for like four years now and Axis has been around since 2002 yeah so 10 years um, we've done a lot of we've done a lot of good work we've held a number of benefit shows for different causes from tsunami relief to labor issues to uh, genocide recognition, you know, and uh, it's still around. Yeah. And you're supporting uh, also PETA, right? Well, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> I, I support a number of different organizations. Yeah. I've worked uh, for many years with Amnesty International. Um, PETA is an organization that I've I've been involved with here and there, but they've been more involved with me than I've been involved with them. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, and uh, because you know. You know, I I think some of the stuff they do is incredible. Some of the stuff they do is a little overboard. Yeah. Um, another organization that does that that I totally support is Greenpeace. Okay. I believe that um, sometimes you have to be an eco terrorist to get people's uh, um, attention. Yeah. You know, because they're just blinded by the uh, noise, the white noise, and the yeah. repetition. Um, so um, there's a lot of organizations that I've worked with. Um, 
the Armenian National Committee of America with genocide recognition, etc., etc. Cool. Now, again, again, uh, with music, do you have any plans to go to Latin America soon? Um, well, we're going to be. I'm, I'm spending most of this summer doing promo stuff in the U.S. Okay. for the record, and then I'm going to go to Europe and do some promo stuff as well. So this year will probably be just U.S. and Europe. Next year will be touring, like real touring. Cool. Um, and that's when we'll, we'll definitely make our plans down to South America with my backup band, the FCC. <laughs> yeah. Now, what do, you th what do you think that makes special Latin American crowd? They're absolutely nuts. <laughs> the Latin the, blood. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, do you local. remember the, the time <laughs> where you go to, to Mexico City? Oh, yeah. It was incredible, man. Uh, not just the show, but it was, it was really good to go. We got out and saw some local music at a bar and... And went to, uh, I remember going to Teotihuacan, yeah. the pyramids, and had a wonderful... Such a just, magical place. It's a real magical place, man. Isn't it? Um, and uh, we, we had this guide, and he took us underground to where the uh, kind of priests used to be uh, um, kind of their living areas and stuff like that. And we, we held like a little ceremony, you know, and lit a candle and played some music. It was beautiful. Um, yeah, the very powerful energy center, you know, you feel it. And um, and we. I also went to, um, when, when we went to South America after the uh, after Mexico, we went to uh, uh, Peru and we went to Machu Picchu, the Quechua ruins, uh, Oyotamba, and I didn't pronounce that right, Oy Oyumotamba. Anyway, um, don't hold me on my pronunciation. Um, it, was, it was an incredible trip. I really enjoyed going down there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Now, now, talking about the reality of, of music, it has surprised you how much have changed music industry since this, when you start until now? Yeah, or definitely. Um, well, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Well, cup, you know, the piracy effect coupled with, you know, the changing formats has completely spun the industry around on, on its own head. Um, it's a, the, the current model of major labels and the way that we put out music is outdated. We all know it. Um, it's spinning into a more kind of um, what's going to be sustainable is uh, uh, streaming, I think, uh, worldwide streaming. I think it's going to, you know, um, being able to have any song at your access anytime from any device is going to be the way to go. Yeah. Um, you know, the traditional brick and mortar is already dying. Now the regular digital is starting to, that's going to fall soon as well. So it's just... To me, it's not the, the death of music, it's the death no. of an industry. It's not the death of an industry, it's a complete it's revolution change, change yeah. in the industry. So people are going to be getting their music in different ways, as they are starting to now. But on the positive side, there's more people in the world listening to music than ever before. That's true. Which is great. And yeah. there's more music musicians and, and artists that are creating music more freely because anyone you know, with a computer and a little recording device can make music now. Yeah. 30 years ago, that wasn't the case. That's true. Now, this is a, a music channel, so I'm going to ask you about some videos and tell me what you remember about the making of. Okay. Start one that I really enjoy, Left of the Center. Oh, okay, cool, yeah. Um, left of Center, and uh, I'm thinking majority was done by the same video director for us, and uh, I will get you his name later because I can't <laughs> think of it. But um, he, he's a, a, a claymation artist, Yeah. and he makes everything out of clay. And uh, incredible work. Yeah, it's a piece like, of art. It's a piece of art. Yeah, just seeing and the 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 um, you can't believe how fast he made those videos. It was incredible amount of work for s quick time, you know. And uh, I, I'll give you his name after you. You have to look it up. You look yeah. him up. His well, his yeah. website. It's he's just phenomenal. So that was really interesting making. I mean, I didn't do the work. They did the work. Yeah. Like I don't have much to say about it. I just for left of center. I went in for like two three hours and on a white screen and just did, he did some performance yeah. and they took everything and and you were like whoa whoa yeah <laughs> when i got that first cut from that video i was like what the? you know it's like incredible you know cool but he did the unthinking majority with all the little clay soldiers fighting each other and the city being destroyed which is same same director cool yeah. and, and the last one one of the first one sugar oh sugar oh the video for sugar yeah. that was our first video yeah. our first official video that was fun. Um, I remember writing the uh, intro to Sugar. The okay. uh, I was inspired by Network. The, the yeah, the, 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 old... the start doing the news and start like getting mad. Yeah, you you, you know, have you seen the movie Network from the seventies? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. And it's, where and the it's, guy kind the guy, of just yeah. he can't deal with it yeah. anymore. He's a and newscaster he's like and he just loses out, it yeah. and freaks out. 
So it was the beginning of that. We wanted to kind of do like that intro. So I remember writing it like two days before the video. I was writing uh, what he's going to say and stuff. And it was a funny video. And it was our first experience making a video, you know, so it was very exciting. Yeah. Cool. Well, Serach, it's an honor. Thank you very much for your time in this interview. Thank Good you. luck, congratulations, because Harakiri, I think that it's an amazing album. Thanks, brother. And Gracias, hopefully see you soon in, in Latin America. That sounds good. Cool. Ya lo vieron, hermanos, un gran artista, Serge Tanquian. Pues bueno, ya nos despedimos. Estamos aquí en Telehit, no le cambien. Chao. Salud. Salud.